Good afternoon guys, JP here again today with you uh, and guess what? We have another Magnolia to show you. Um, this one is pretty much identical to the one we designed in 2008 except for the fact that the interior is totally different so it's not similar at all. <laughs> so what I meant was um, the exterior is pretty much a carbon copy of the original design that we created in 2008 but the interior is totally different so that's what we're really thrilled to show you today uh, the exterior dimensions are the same as the original design so 34 plus 2 uh, for a total of 36 feet overall uh, by 10 feet and a half since we don't change a winning recipe uh, we went with the vertical shusugi ban combined with the horizontal stained cedar for this project we went with darker tones than the previous magnolias and i think it really gives a, a nice character to this home now that you know that there's nothing new about the exterior i'm pretty sure you want to go inside right so i'm going to ask that google nest if he wants me to come in hey google nest can i come in please proceed all right you can go in welcome inside this custom magnolia uh, we're now in the living area so it's um, the overall layout is, like I said, similar to the original design. So um, here in the bump out section, uh, we have the, let's call it the TV area. Um, so here um, the client can stack all of her electronics and she can have the TV right there. And she has tons of storage in here. For this project, we had a specific feature we needed to include in these cabinets. So uh, the bottom cabinet here, uh, is actually uh, the litter box uh, cabinet. So on the side here, we have a hole where the cat can go in. And then when you want to change the litter box, you just open the door here and do whatever you need to do. And the best thing about that cabinet is up there in the bottom, there's a, a hole and there's a 12 volt fan that is pushing the air constantly outside the house. Considering a tiny house is mostly an open space, um, odors like that will uh, easily spread uh, into the whole home. So by adding this simple but efficient uh, mechanism, we avoid anything like that. The overall design pretty much dictates where the, uh, the head of the mini split will be located inside the house. In the, mon uh, in the case of the Magnolia, this area here is where it's gonna be installed most of the time. And then when the bedroom is closed in the bottom, and we need to add another head, then we, uh, we install it inside uh, the master bedroom. And next to the head of the mini split, we have uh, the typical uh, heat recovery air exchanger that we install stuck in our homes. Uh, the reason why we left an opening right there is because the client will install a sewing machine here so she will be able to sit and work on her stuff. Um, so that way she can still benefit from the storage, but this will be sort of a two-in-one workstation with the sewing machine and also the TV area at the same time. Uh, this house is equipped with a 100 amp uh, electrical panel and also a 30 amp uh, generator outlet. So considering the new regulations in terms of electricity, we need to have these two panels uh, installed separately. So here is where we install them. So on top we have the, um, the, 100, the 100 amp electrical panel and on, on the bottom here we have the 30 amp so the 30 amp generator plug is not something that is mandatory in a tiny house but in case you know that that might be outages in the area where you're located it's always nice to have a generator as a backup and what you want to install in the electrical panel that is dedicated to the generator outlet is pretty much what's essential for the house so what you want to include in there is pretty much heating lights and probably at least a few outlets. Most of the times we include solar blinds in all of our windows and also on the door because uh, all of our doors normally have a glass on it. Uh, for the first time we're using this type of door that includes a blind that is inside the glass of the door. And I think it's really clever to have that. Um, this mechanism here is just to lift the whole blind so that way you can see through the window and then here you can adjust the opacity like that. So you can go from intimate to everybody sees you. Oh, intimate. Uh, everybody sees you intimate. And on the other side here, we have the entrance closet. And um, what's different than the original design is this time the client decided to split the, the entrance closet in half. So that way on the left side, she will have a closet rod and she can put coats and all that. 
on the right side she will put other stuff and she decided to separate it into different sections but you can adjust them all the shelves are adjustable depending on the stuff you want to include in there pull out pantry classic <laughs> The layout of the kitchen is really similar to the original design, but the cabinets are all shaker style and they're gray instead of white. And I think that's what distinguishes this house compared to the original design. Um, there's still a quartz countertop uh, and it's fully equipped. For the first time, um, we didn't install the Muralux panels on the wall. These are real tiles. And uh, I was skeptical at first, but I really think that adds up to the design. Um, we have the farm sink here. Thanks, guys. I've had some people, some nice people that explained to me what was the farm sink. So now I know and I will get to bed a little smarter tonight. Um, we like to include a small awning window here so that way um, you can see through when you're doing the dishes. And also, but you don't do the dishes. There's a little dishwasher in here. Yeah, but um, back to the awning window. Uh, that's a clever type of window because you can uh, let the rain fall down and you don't have to worry f about the water coming in because the awning window makes it so the water will drip down. Um, and that little kitchen faucet is really cute. It's cute, isn't it? Uh, when I said that the, the kitchen is fully equipped, we're talking about uh, a built-in microwave oven. We have a four burner induction cooktop along with uh, a small 24 inches dishwasher. So everything's in there for full-time living. Um, going tiny has not the same meaning for everyone, but once you go from a, a, a big footprint to a smaller footprint, I think you're seizing the concept of what the tiny home movement is all about. Um, and when it comes to compromises, um, not everybody wants to compromise the same thing inside their homes. Uh, some will give up bathroom space, some will give up kitchen space, not in this case, I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> we have a client that likes to cook, and for this reason, she installed that huge. <laughs> <laughs> so pardon me, I'm still shocked. So yeah, uh, it's a huge fridge, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, but one cool thing about it is uh, when we'll face the next lockdown, she will be able to stack up so much food and she won't even have to get out of her house for months in a row. So think about that a bit. So in front of the peninsula, we have the breakfast nook uh, that is common inside the Magnolia design. Um, we like to include outlets here. And for this design, the clients wanted to have these uh, little sconces. I think they add up to the design as well. And also, I'll talk to you about that later, but these are really stylish blinds. Um, and actually there's three, uh, three types of blinds in this house. And I'll tell you more about what specific blinds is used for what specific case later. And since we're constantly improving our product, um, there's a difference here between the original Magnolia, um, the access to the washer and dryer valves. So under the breakfast nook counter, we uh, included an access to the valves of the washer and dryer. So that way you don't have to reach in the bottom here and try to barely open them. They're already here and you have easy access to them. So here they are, it's a stackable Bosch washer and dryer, 24 inches uh, condensation. Uh, so the entrance to the bathroom is uh, with a barn door mechanism this time. We installed a chalkboard uh, door so that way you can take notes of what's missing in your big fridge, even though nothing will be missing ever in that fridge. Um, so yeah, you can take notes or write poems or whatever you want to write on there. Um, and next to the, uh, the, fr the fridge, we have the place where we store the ladder to the loft. And this time, most of the time the ladder will not remain in position and will be tossed away in the bottom for the simple fact that this loft area will be mainly used as storage and not for, uh, sleeping, uh, for a sleeping area compared to the other lofts included in Magnolia's. So the loft area is 55 square feet. And uh, the reason why there's less space than the original Magnolia is because instead of a half wall um, that separates the loft to the master bedroom, uh, there's some uh, big storage um, cabinets that are accessible from the bedroom. 
super smooth. Um, welcome inside the bathroom. Uh, we have the mechanical room here in the entrance. Um, this house is equipped with uh, an electric hot water tank. Uh, this one is 30 gallon, Bradford White. We work with Bradford White and Giant most of the time. Um, and like all of our plumbing system, the house is equipped with a small particle filter and not much else in this case. Um, so behind the hot water tank, we have the three power supply, one power supply for each uh, LED strip that is installed in the house. And we like to bring them all at the same place because it's clever and it's neat. So the hot water tank is always installed in a drip pan. And to add up to the safety, we install a humidity sensor inside that drip pan. So that way, if there's uh, a leak, you'll know it uh, quite fast. So we have an electrical outlet in the bottom. So that way you can plug uh, a vacuum cleaner or something like that. So the first switch is the one that opens up the utility outlet that is installed underneath the house. That one normally receives the heating wire or heating tape that goes around your main water line so that way it doesn't freeze during winter time. The second switch opens up the light of the mechanical room. It's simple like that. So the bathroom is equipped with a nice vanity. Uh, it's a decent size um, so you can actually store a lot of stuff in there. Um, as you can see the mirror is kind of flat a little bit. Uh, actually, to be honest, the client will install that herself because she has this thing that is kind of fragile so that we didn't want to install that and have it break on the road. She also wanted to include these two uh, sconces. Actually, they, they match with the cell of the bathroom. We also have a flush toilet in that design and like we always do, we install a nice little window above the toilet. So next to the mechanical room, we have a 32 by 32 um, shower with uh, again these uh, Muralux aluminum panels um, that are easy to maintain and we have a nice glass door like that. So yeah and of course the ceiling is a cedar with stain and a couple of layers of varnish so that way the humidity doesn't get inside the ceiling. And we also have that um, humidity extractor fan that we install stock in all of our bathroom. So I strongly recommend that if you want to take notes for your grocery list, you don't do that on that door. You should use the other one. What's up? So I am now inside the master bedroom. And that's one of the things people like about the Magnolia design, the main floor bedroom, main floor bedroom. Uh, the main floor bedroom is one of the things that distinguishes the Magnolia from all the other tiny houses designed on the market. And uh, that is why um, this design is really appealing to not only aging people that don't want to climb up in lofts, but for people in general that don't want to climb up in lofts. And I include myself in there. I would go tiny, but the loft, it's cool for a weekend or two, but nothing beats a main floor bedroom. Um, a little earlier, I was talking about the storage cabinets that are included inside the loft and we didn't want them to exceed inside the master bedroom. So they're facing towards the bedroom and you have access uh, if you just use uh, a little three steps. So obviously this will be used for seasonal storage and there was no need to put handles on that. So it's pretty slick design. So it's kind of a stealth um, storage. I was talking about blinds earlier and how this house uh, includes three types of blinds and there's a reason for that. Um, the blinds that are installed in the living area and the kitchen are more design oriented. Uh, the one in the bathroom as well, but it's not the same color since the color scheme in the bathroom is quite different. So that one is white. And when you come to uh, the master bedroom, uh, you really want something that performs and that blocks the light. So we went with solar blinds that are really um, light tight so that way you can sleep well and you can last your night until noon if you want but don't do that since we like to anticipate people's future needs um, we can include stuff like this HDMI cable here um, there's no uh, TV that's gonna be installed on the short term but then at some point um, the client wants to install the TV the backing is in there the HDMI cable is already run from top to bottom and that way she can just install a little shelf with the laptop or whatever stuff she's going to use to project on the TV screen. Uh, one of the advantages of uh, having a main floor bedroom is the fact that you can use what's underneath the bed as a storage space. 
So in this case, we installed a kangaroo bed that lifts up and allows a lot of storage space. You can divide that with compartment or just leave it like that. So on each side of the bed, we have uh, two little nightstands with um, kind of a big drawer size. And also we have some sconces on each side of the bed along with uh, a dimmable LED switch here. Above the bed, we have this uh, huge custom cabinet that includes tons of storage. Uh, on each side, you can either divide it with shelves or you can also include a closet rod and uh, you can pack a lot of gear in there. Um, that one here, um, you can use a, a hook, but you can pull it like that and that's, uh, that's something to hang clothes. And that's also something that uh, we didn't include in the other version of the Magnolia, but something that we'll definitely include in uh, future designs. So that's a wrap guys for this uh, sixth version of the Magnolia. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as you can see, this design really allows our clients to make this layout their own by only adding a few modifications here and there. So of course, uh, the Magnolia is uh, one of our most popular design along with the Neuer. So if you're interested into a custom project or modifying an existing design and making it your own, please contact us through the quote section of our website for more information. And uh, thanks for following us uh, on our different media platforms. And uh, also don't hesitate to comment uh, any ideas you might have or any uh, opinions you guys have on the projects we're creating. It really helps us improve our product. And um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be posting some more content shortly. Um, have a good day. Have a good night. See you in the next video tour.